Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. In for John Smith today, Gabe Nunez is joining us, wide receiver for the Thunderbirds, Southern Utah head coach Delane Fitzgerald joining me as well. We'll talk about the Tarleton game. We'll look ahead to Eastern Kentucky, all sorts of stuff. Let's head right into our game recap brought to you by Retro Fitness. Appreciate them sponsoring the show. And, uh, Coach, why don't you kick things off? I lo- love love Retro Fitness and, and Bevan. Appreciate the sponsorship of the show, Bevan, my man. Um, we're not doing recap right now. Um, yeah, a di- different guy sitting in the hostess seat today. That's true. Uh, yeah, John, John Smith. Does that mean we get to go completely off script? Because uh, I will take a podcast in any direction that you want to go, this coach, deal, quite this, frankly. This deal has no script with me in it. Um, <laughs> but but I, 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 so those of y'all out there, the inquiring minds, um, John Smith is suffering mightily in Cabo <laughs> right now. Um, him, him and his buddies are in Cabo on a golf course right now, and he's wishing he was here with us in Cedar City. I, I, think kn- the, I know it. I think the golf course is uncomfortably close to the Gulf of Mexico. It makes for these really ugly photos, oh, the photo. you know, like the views on the edge. Like I've always found when you're golfing next to the ocean, it's a little distracting. The pictures are beautiful. Yeah, you have the waves crashing, and they just keep making that noise over and over. I mean, is there anything as bothersome as waves crashing? Oh, my gosh, I can't. I can't hit. I can't I would, hit a golf I would, ball. I would imagine crashing. that group's pretty stressed out hitting the ball this morning. Gosh, I would be too. I mean, yeah. how how could you not be? But uh, coach, is, now, now now that we've um, expressed it, John's checked out on us. We can move to the recap. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's Monday game, Saturday night. Four hours of total game time. I don't know if you saw there or what the exact number was, but when I checked my phone after the game wrapped up, it was ten o'clock on on Saturday night. How are you feeling here on on Monday after that game? Yeah, college football game shouldn't last four hours. Um, that they should be somewhere between two forty five and three fifteen, and, and around about three o five. Um, there was there was some mismanagement in that aspect of the football game um, that that led it to go that long. So that Spencer, you can play a football game and play one or two overtime periods in three hours and fifteen minutes, uh, far too long. But I, I need to get off of that soapbox. So um, the game on the game on Saturday night. A lot of things to talk about, but but I'll sum it up this way: You can't spot a good football program twenty-one points and, and expect to be successful in, in, in a football game. Uh, we, we've done that far too often here. This was the first time we've done it this year, but we've done it far too often here. Guys not being ready to play at kickoff, not being ready to play at six p.m. and give their all. Um, Spencer, us not having uh, any urgency and any punch at six p.m. and it comes back to the head coach. It, it, it falls on me. I have to do a better job of getting our players ready to play at the start of a football game. Um, what, once we were down twenty-one to nothing, Spencer, we settled down middle way through the second quarter, scored a touchdown. They scored a touchdown. We go in. We're down twenty-eight to seven at, at halftime. Um, very, very very spirited, very, very point blank, straight to the point, honest, spirited um, halftime speech um, by, by me. Our, our coordinators made the made the correct offensive defensive adjustments at halftime. We come out in the second half, and you know we go on our patented Thunderbird second half run, which is what we do. Um, play better in the second half than we did in the first half. Uh, Spencer, I know why. I'm not going to get into it on the program. I know why we do it. We have really nice young men. And we have nice young men that are really good in the classroom, really good off the field. Um, that that they, It's not in their biological makeup to, to come out and be real authoritative to start with, um, but we've got to get to that personality in our football program. Got to get there. We come out in the second half after we feel th- we've felt things out for, for the first hour and a half and play really, really well in the second half. Um, Spencer play like a championship football team, play like a team that can win a conference title and win postseason games in the second half. Just got to be able to put it together for four quarters, and we didn't do that Saturday night. It is the second straight year that you had a 20-point a comeback against this Tarleton program. I don't know what it is about the Texans and the Thunderbirds, but it's just – a lot of close games prior to your arrival here in Cedar City. It was 40 to 35 in Texas, and it's 42 40, 27 26, and then 38 to 37. What, what does it say about you know a, a Tarleton program that has really elevated itself to be one of the 15 best in the country? That that your team was able to overcome a deficit that, as you said, you guys put yourself in in that particular hole. But what what does it say about that locker room that for the second straight year they're able to come back against a really good football team? 
Yeah, you, you mentioned it. Tarleton's a good football program, only going to get better. Got plenty of money, part of the Texas A&M system. So they've got money, and they're spending that money in football. Good good for them. Um, you, you asked about the, the, the character and what it says about us. We, we don't have any lack of character in, in our locker room. And, and I'll, I'll say this over and over again. Got great young men. Great young men who are good citizens in our community and good citizens in, in our state and on our campus, and, and young men that that have some resolve and some resiliency and, and, and going to come back and do the right thing, which is what you saw on Saturday night. This was a crazy game, back and forth, down big, have the lead. Tarleton ties it. Tarleton gets the interception. It was all back and forth. What was the messaging to your team as the the game was just kind of swinging from one side of the pendulum to the other? Yeah. I, I, all three games we played against Alton have been crazy. Yeah. You go, <laughs> it's been you, wild. You go back here in 22, and, and the game's relatively close at, at halftime. They out, they score, outscore us 28 to nothing in the third quarter. We turn around the fourth quarter and outscore them 28 to nothing, uh, you know, which ends up being a, a two-point loss for us. Um, but, yeah, we've had some wild games with them. You, you spoke on it. You, you know, we're down 20 to nothing at halftime there last year. We beat them 27-26 on a fumble uh, by, by their star tail back at the end of the game. And then every Everything that happened Saturday night, which had back and forth in the fourth quarter, and us putting it into overtime, sending it into overtime, or them sending it into overtime, and then us just not finishing there. Um, you talk about the message, and I know you're looking for one answer. There's a lot of messages at a lot of different points in time during a four hour football game. There, there's a lot of messages. You know, our, our message to start the game was let's, let's punch first. You know, let's get ahead. Let's get a lead to start with. And we did the exact opposite. And, and then, then the message got a little more intense and a little more direct at halftime. We came out and we responded. Well, then you have a different message going into overtime. And we got, got we played fine in overtime. So that they fumbled, they fumbled the ball and uh, incorrect call. They ended up giving them a touchdown. But they fumbled the ball going into the end zone in overtime and, and shouldn't shouldn't have gotten that score. But they did. But they did, and that's the way it is. We turn around and answer with the score, and then just miss the kick. Um, that, that that's the way it ended. Real hard, real hard to swallow. Real real hard to swallow. I, I'm gonna start answering your questions in one sentence instead of five minutes. But coach, that, you take as long as you want. I think yeah. people hear from me plenty on the broadcast. I think they tune into the coaches' show to hear from the head coach. I could be wrong, yeah, but just, I think I'm right. I think they're just bored on a Tuesday evening. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Um, at, during a four-hour football game, the message changes a lot. And, and the offense and defense have different messages. The special teams have different messages. If you were to say, hey, what was your message, you know, on Saturday night, I'd have to write down 25 different ones to give to you. Targi Lampson had another big game, a career high in carries and yards for Targi. He goes over 200 yards. Coach, I have a, a question for you off the top. Do you know how many rushing yards Targi Lampson had all of last season? About half of what he's got now. That is exactly what I was going to say. Is okay. This is about half. About he half. should be at about 900, assuming Regan's done the stats correctly, which, you know, 50-50 on that front. Um, he should be at about 948 yards right now. And last year he had in the 480 range. Why has he elevated himself to be one of the premier backs in all of FCS college football? Yeah, Target was a good running back in high school and, and had some great issues and had to go to junior college and went to junior college and did pretty well academically. Has come here and been a good student here also. Kind of seen the light in his education. Um, but he was a good player in high school. He was a good player at Snow College and he was a good player here last year. Um, Spencer, th this has happened a lot in, in, in my coaching career. When the light bulb comes on and the young man understands it mentally more than he understands it physically, when, when, a, when a young man's mental skill set is better than everybody that he's playing against, they elevate to a completely different level. And, and don't get me wrong, Targi had a great spring spring ball with us. He had a great off-season strength and conditioning. Winter, spring, summer, he's really good. And I, I'll get these things wrong, but he power cleaned over 300 pounds. He squatted over 500 pounds. But here's where he's at it. To, he he, he squatted over 500 pounds? I think it's closer to 550. Pretty high. Yeah, he's he's way he's way up there. Um, but so but, he could pick me up with one hand and just kind of do some. But he like, wouldn't. But he would. But he wouldn't because he's such a nice guy. <laughs> um, th this is, people the mental skill set. What's in your chest and what's between your ears? 
is a heck of a lot more important than a lot of the other skill sets that you have, and that's what he's added to it. Um, but I, I like this one, and I'll, I'll tell this story. He's he's put himself right in the middle uh, of of the of being a high level NFL prospect running back, and I got got a phone call from from a scout yesterday, and it went from when the scouts were stopping by, and we've had over a dozen stop by so far this year, and there'll be another dozen come through. But they were coming through. They wanted to talk about two other players, and then they wanted to spend about thirty seconds on Targi. Now, now they stop by and they want to talk about Targi for 15 minutes and they will spend a little little other time on other players. Um, but he's played really, really well. It's going to end up paying off for him. Coach, any final thoughts on the Tarleton game before we uh, look ahead? No, you did. Talk, talk to him on the football game. Got to, t- got to tip your hat to him, and we have to put it away and move to the next one. Well, let's get to our student spotlight brought to you by Cedars. Visit Cedar City and Brian Head. Bunch of great things to do in town. We appreciate them sponsoring the Thunderbird Coaches Show here. Gabe Nunez is our student spotlight here today. First time on the Coaches Show, I believe. I definitely didn't know that when Coach asked me which player I wanted to have on uh, the show for today. Uh, I'm kidding, of course, because I did know that one 100%. And I think everybody should have the opportunity to come here and, and sit next to Coach and talk if, to the good if people of City. If Gabe doesn't start scoring some touchdowns, this is going to be his last opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first and last thing. No pressure then, Gabe. No I pressure. You, I don't know how you have a 1,000 yards receiving in a game and not score a touchdown. <laughs> Do everything but. He's, he's, aller- <laughs> hey, he's allergic to paint. All that paint in the end zone. Allergic to paint. I haven't heard that one before. I might break that one out on the broadcast this weekend. uh, You don't like the color of the end zone. (laughs) We'll note that on uh, on file. But, Gabe, you have gotten into the end zone uh, this year, including last week uh, against – Austin P had another good game uh, against Tarleton. Talk about, you know, the last couple of weeks, there've been some injuries in that wide receiver room. What, what have you kind of, you know, seen from yourself as you've had a couple of really productive outings? Uh, I think it's just the work in the off season. Um, people got some opportunities with the injuries. Z Mitch and Mark got hurt. Shane really stepped up. He's a young guy. Uh, Devin stepped up. He got some opportunities. He did good. But yeah, I think it's just the work in the off season. It's coming to light now. What's your chemistry like with uh, Bronson Barron? You've had a couple of different signal callers back there. You know, mm-hmm. what's it been like for you on the edge dealing with a couple of different guys? Uh, me and Bronson have a good relationship, I think. Um, back Even back to spring when he first got here, I think we clicked right away. I think he likes throwing to the slot a little bit. So uh, love that, being in the slot. Yeah. Is that where you've always played as, as a wide receiver? You've always been most comfortable in the slot? Yeah. Is that, where you, is that why you recruited him, Coach? Is that what you saw in Gabe Nunez when he came to Cedar City? Your senior year, did you have 135 catches? Uh, somewhere around there. That's yeah. what I saw. I saw 135 <laughs> catches. I saw pro- productivity. <laughs> so, and and their 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 high school coach Jeff Steinberg, great, great football coach, quarterback mind, offensive mind. But um, Gabe had 130 catches, and then Anston Crowd had somewhere around 100. Um, so, so we recruited them both, and they've done a nice job for us. Over the last couple of weeks, you've kind of become a go-to guy in, in the wide receiver room. Have you kind of shouldered that responsibility both w- with your play but also in that room? Like we mentioned, Zach Mitchell and Mark Bales haven't uh, been fully available the last couple of weeks. What, what's that been like for you to kind of take that step forward? Uh, just being the older guy in the room, I just thought that it was my responsibility to step forward and lead the room a little bit more. And the, it, it was really more the – the practice stuff being the leader at practice and then the stuff on game day just came along with it let's go backwards a little bit before you got to cedar city how'd you get to uh, southern utah what made you want to come and be a t-bird uh coming out of high school no offers no stars no ratings nothing um didn't know if i was going to go juco or walk on anywhere and then coach uh coach fitz and my high school coach were at a uh, coaching convention i believe and then uh, he gave me the opportunity to come walk on here, and that's how I ended up here. And have you, you know, in, 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 in your time seen kind of an evolution amongst yourself? Like how different of a player are you now from, from when you first set foot on campus? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, when I first got here, um, I'm able to do a lot more things than I knew I could ever do from the competitions in spring um, once you get past that mental block, your body can take on a lot more than you think it can. You feel like the coaching staff has gotten that out of you? Yeah. Push past your breaking point for sure. Is that a message that, that they push on you guys a lot to go past your breaking point? Definitely. What, is that, what, what does that mean? Like that, That's a statement that I think makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. to people on the one hand, but on the other hand, people might have a hard time visualizing. What does that mean at, at, at practice or, or in the weight room? Like, How does that play out for you as a player? 
the best example I could give you is in the springtime we do competitions and the first time the my first spring here um, I thought that I gave it all that I had in the competitions wasn't doing that good and then a whole year goes by in the program and the next spring I'm doubling the numbers that I did double doubled my pull-ups doubled everything and it, it just shows that I just didn't unlock what I had I had a lot more and I just didn't know that I had it yet awesome coach can you can you do a pull-up today with which arm <laughs> see that's a fullback's response right there a wide receiver might say oh uh, yeah no I can do a few I can get my number but with with which arm I, I'm, I'm convinced that I can do a lot of pull-ups right now but I'm also convinced that's that I probably yeah I probably wouldn't be able to m pick my arms up or brush my teeth for the next month <laughs> <laughs> See, but that'd be worth it. That'd be, that'd be worth it just to be able to say, yeah, I'm – I forgot how old you are. I tell the players all the time, I, I've got a quarter in me. The the adrenaline and competition in me, the competitive side of me, I, I'd make it a quarter. Now, I have three torn hamstrings and, <laughs> and, and, and an Achilles injury, and I wouldn't be able to walk for the next six months, but I'd be really good for a quarter. You wouldn't be able to join John Smith on a golfing trip in uh, – where is he? Cabo? Yeah, Cabo. Okay, yeah, yeah, in, uh, in, hey, in Cabo. Living. John Smith lives a hard life. It's tough. Hard life. It's tough. It's it is indeed incredibly difficult. But Shay, Gabe, shout, shout out to Shannon for putting up with him. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. But Gabe, I I want to go back to you and, and talk about kind of you know your life in in Cedar City. What, what what are some of the things that that you like doing here uh, in town? Like why have you you know stuck around at Southern Utah outside of football? Mm, I like the small town. At first I didn't, but then it grew on me for sure. I like it now. Um, I did start golfing a lot when I moved to college. Now we're talking. Now, now we're in my wheelhouse. That's that's what we love to hear. But my swing, my swing is messed up because last year I broke my collarbone, and then when I was doing the healing process, uh, that's when I started watching the golf videos, <laughs> started watching YouTube on golf, and then and then I got healthy and started swinging, but I didn't have a uh, very good a range of motion, so my swing's a little messed up. But I uh, can fix that. Don't worry. You, uh, I can do it. Uh, John, 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 or myself, e e either one of us, we can we can get you on the straight and narrow. But I I know there are a couple avid golfers on the Southern Utah football team. Yeah. It's not it's not just you. I know Elias Vigil, uh, nice. the punter Parker, mm -hmm. uh, one, a part of the special teams, also uh, a big golfer in there. Are, are there other are there other what's guys? Your, what's your definition of avid? Well. You know, my definition probably, like for me personally, is a lot different than everybody else. Okay, so, so avid, avid, doesn't, avid, avid doesn't mean they're good. No, no, okay. no. Avid doesn't mean good. That just means that you you play okay. any opportunity that you get. That's yeah. what I describe as as an avid golfer. Yeah, we, you don't, we don't you have to be. Good. We don't have a good golfer in our program. <laughs> top, top to bottom coaching staff tra we don't have trainers strength condition we don't have a good golfer in our program well that now, also depends on how we you have define some guys, good we have some guys that'll play nine holes two three days a week we don't have anybody good well i think it's a great way to to get out but i assume you play plenty of golf at at cedar ridge which mm -hmm. is a great course i yeah. love going out there and playing but what what else about cedar city have you come to to really appreciate as you've adapted to that small town feel mm. I do kind of like the snow growing up in Southern California. No snow at all. I no, think it snowed get any over once there. or one or two times my whole life. So the snow is pretty cool. Um, the hikes are cool. There's a disc golf course a little bit past the golf course, which is pretty fun. I like to do that. I like to go camping in the springtime a lot, which is fun. Um, and I live with my two best friends also from high school that I went to high school with. So can't really complain about that either. That's awesome. Awesome. What, uh, what sorts of spots restaurant wise do you do you like frequenting town and think think very carefully about your answers because whatever you say coach Fitz will probably have a response of some sort uh i'm a real bad a uh, real big fan of um brad's food hut mm. i like that i oh, like yeah. it's like a like a mom and pop place yeah you get a cheeseburger so. for i think three dollars there you can't can't get that uh, very many very many i don't places. think you can get that remind remind me what what city in uh, southern california you're from originally uh, it's from a small city about 45 minutes west of um, palm springs it's called beaumont beaumont gotcha i i imagine that if you go to palm springs and try to find a three dollar cheeseburger yeah. you would um have a difficult time yeah shall we say very it'd hard. be it'd be challenging so brad's is a good spot are there any other ones that, that you really, uh, really like here brad's in hermes is almost the same thing as brad's i think um Hermes milkshakes go hard. Yeah, I've oh. never had one from oh. there yet. 
you haven't had a Hermes milkshake yet? No. Coach, are you hearing this? Yeah. Hasn't had a Hermes <laughs> milkshake yet. What do you do when you want a milkshake? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't really have a sweet tooth. Uh, well, I, I understand that. Like, I don't eat a lot of candy, but a milkshake every now and then on an 85 uh, degree day in October, which apparently we're just going okay. to keep on getting here in Cedar City, which yeah. I'm fine with personally because it allows for more golf. Hermes milkshakes. Out to try one. Yes, I, I absolutely recommend. That's our student spotlight brought to you by Visit Cedar City and Brian Headless. Get to this week's opponent. It's homecoming week here in Cedar City, which is exciting. A lot of sports going on this week. Volleyball with a couple games. Soccer with a game on Friday. The football game upcoming against Eastern Kentucky brought to you by the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. They provide a safe, welcoming environment for 21 and up. Great food, great drinks. They show sports, UFC, everything that you could possibly want. We appreciate Warehouse. Uh, Coach, any shout-outs over at, uh, at at Warehouse? I know there are a lot of great, great people working on We love there. Reggie. Re- Reggie's been a good sponsor of the Reggie's show. The Re- Reggie's been a good fan of our football program. But, yeah, Reggie is the man. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, but, no, that, Reggie, thank you for everything. Yeah, Coach, uh, Eastern Kentucky on tap this week for – the homecoming game uh take a, a brief look at uh, ahead and you know the last time that uh that we took on this team it was in eastern kentucky a couple of years ago and uh they had a quarterback who isn't there anymore like justin miller finally graduated <laughs> and they you know are they, they've been a really really solid program what do you expect from eastern kentucky? parker parker mckinney's the quarterback you're thinking about yeah t- turned in one of the better quarterback performances regan that- and i spent about three minutes coming up with that name before we hopped on here to record we didn't use the answer boxes that are in our pockets because that would have been way too easy but we got there eventually. When a guy tuned you up like he tuned us up in 22, you don't forget his name. <laughs> but if I, y- y'all correct me on the stats, but he was 21 of 25 for about 300 yards against us that night. And somebody said, well, he missed four times. Uh, he threw two out of bounds. He threw two out of bounds on the two-minute drill. And then he throws a laser that hits their wide receiver right in the numbers and bounces up that we intercept. So in my, um, in my amateur math, he missed one pass all night um but but really really good for he's, he's their all-time leader in all their passing categories yeah i don't know what parker's doing now but i'm glad he's not playing for them anymore yeah um graduated moved on to greener pastures uh eastern kentucky spencer uh multiple on offense like everybody else or multiple spread like everybody else in the country they have done a good job uh, of spreading the ball around that they've got two tailbacks to do a nice job running the football for them and then they have four receivers with almost the exact same number of catches this year quarterbacks throwing for 58 59 percent he's doing a nice job of taking care of the football seven touchdowns one interception so that they're doing a good job on offense um a, a tale of two teams kind of like us they they opened with two fbs teams a lot like us and, and then after those two fbs teams their schedule smoothed out a little bit and and, and they played some more uh, co- competition that's at their level um and they've done a nice job they've shown that they're a good football program their defense much improved from last year. Um, that defense, they are sound up front, and, and they're bigger and stronger than, than the last couple of front sevens that, that we've played this year. Um, they've done a nice job of stopping people from running the football. And then their DBs run around and make plays, and they've got some athletic young men at DB that, that do a nice job in coverage for them. When you have a, a defense like that that's big and strong and the Southern Utah offensive line, of course, also – big and strong how, how do you message to those guys going into this game how do you get them ready for that challenge because every Thunderbird fan knows by now that Targi Lampson is the driving force of uh, of the offense so far this season how do you keep that success going this week yeah we're, we're, we're a little more than just Targi Gabe's had back-to-back 100 yard game Shane Carr had a 100 yard game three, three weeks ago um that we're a little more than just them our, our tight ends are starting to come around and play good football and Josh Accord and Chase Merrill both had touchdowns and big catches last week so we're a little more than just Targi um that no, no doubt about it and we, we talked about you know how how high a level he's playing right now but here, here's what happens when you're playing against somebody big and strong or our offensive line isn't getting any taller this week and they're not gaining a whole lot of weight this week and they're not getting a whole lot stronger although we're working at those two things so what you talk to them about is pad level and technique about using great footwork about a a stance and start and and us being violent with our hands and great pad level and then driving our feet after contact you just do what you do Spencer and you do it better when you look at uh, the defensive side of the ball for uh, for for your team going into uh, this game what are what are a couple of the biggest 
factors that that have to go well for for your team to succeed yeah George, George Ramirez conference player of the week on defense and and George has played well the last two weeks and we expect that to continue um we have to have better production out of our front four our, our front four have to play in the backfield and play better than they have especially last week uh so Spencer we didn't have a tackle for loss or sack on our defensive line last week and that has to change we're too talented for that to stay like it is um linebackers have to be active and then we're going to have to mix coverages up if we just sit in one coverage um the matt, matt morsey their quarterback's going to pick us apart uh, we have to mix coverages up and, and you know that you're not going to confuse him because he's played a lot of college football but you can slow down his decision making process coach uh this past week Eccles was rocking it was a great nighttime environment homecoming uh this week what, what's your message to the Cedar City fans in Iron County out there for you know the upcoming game here against Eastern Kentucky? Now, for, first off, we need to thank everybody for last weekend for coming out. Um, state conference weekend, and, and, and we packed the stadium, and, and I thought they were loud and, and re really, really boisterous, and our, our student section was really good. Um, I also I'm proud to be associated with our marching band, David Torres, and the job he's doing Gosh, with that how group. Good did they look? They, they, they do really. I, I like I like the fact that he's doubled his numbers. And we got yeah. for th those y'all out here. We've had a marching band for about three years now, and it went 60, 60 members to eighty five members to one hundred and twenty five members. Now I think I've got those numbers right, but they do a nice job. They do a nice job. They practice and work at it pretty hard. But thankful for everybody that came out last week, and we need to do it again this week. Homecoming, everybody's coming back to see everybody that they played with. Um, but yeah, they need to pack the stadium and get after them on Saturday night. How, how awesome is it for you as the head coach of the program to you know experience the, these homecoming games and have that opportunity to reconnect with with players past and present? Yeah, I haven't been here long enough to reconnect with a whole lot of them. Yeah, yeah and the, the the couple we haven't had a lot of seniors since, since I've been here. The couple of seniors from twenty two, and I, I speak to a lot of them regularly. And then the ones from twenty three, and I, I'm in, in contact with all of them. And, and then we, uh, uh, Spencer, and nine seniors. And maybe 10 seniors this fall so we don't have many seniors again and then we have uh 38 juniors and 32 sophomores i believe right now on the roster so so we'll become we'll become upperclassmen heavy and really really old after this season but not a lot of seniors yet what are you going to tell this guy next to you gabe nunez going into this game what do you want from him don't screw it up <laughs> i'm joking hey, he'll tell hey, he, he'll tell you i've never said that to him no, no. Gabe runs good routes. He runs good routes and he plays good football. When Gabe's really aggressive, when Gabe's got an aggressive mindset, he plays really well. By the way, I did want to give a shout out. You talked about the the tight ends in in the passing game, but I wanted to shout out Kieran Fry as well. Had a big, big catch late in the game against Tarleton last week. How awesome is it for you as a coach to watch? The, the wide receiver room have guys step up in, in a number of big moments. Yeah, Kiernan walked on to our football program in 2022, still a walk-on, uh, shows up and works really, really hard every day. He's a senior. He's finishing up his education, you, you know, this semester. But uh, proud of Kiernan and, and glad he's getting to have some success at the end of his career. Coach, any uh, final thoughts going into the homecoming game? Any shout-outs you want to give here as we wrap up the show? I got, got to shout-out Jamie Williams, you know, fellow James, fellow James Madison alumnus, and he was with us this past weekend with our team for just about everything we did. But it, it was great having him out here for the weekend. Um, it, I'm trying to think. Is, is that everybody? Uh, there's so many people behind the scenes that do a lot. Uh, Doug Newth, uh, Jeff Tukawafu, uh, Todd Brown, Marie Tuitt. I'm leaving out a lot of people that do a lot of things. Uh, Regan Hunsacker's be behind the camera back there and all that he does for our football program and our athletic department. Um, th there's a lot of people that, that have to wear multiple hats for, for us to pull off a great game day atmosphere, and they're doing it and doing it successfully. So thank you to all of them. Yeah, I, I think the game day atmosphere is in a really, really good spot. So if you didn't come out last week or even if you did, you should definitely come out against Eastern K Kentucky uh, again this week. I have I have one shout out if that is if that is allowed. You want to go last? You want Gabe to go? I'll go. I'll go last. I'll go last. Gabe, Gabe can go. Gabe, any shout outs you want to give here? To wrap up the coach's show. Any shout outs? Um, just want to shout out the whole staff. Uh, it's tough after a losing week, but they're just going to keep coaching us hard and stay positive to go one and zero each week. Um, yeah, that's a, that's pretty much all I got to say. Uh, no, 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 no. Your parents, brothers, and sisters. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, my mom, dad—they both came out to this game, which was cool to see them again. 
Uh, my little sister came out. Uh, say, say their names. Uh, my mom, Jamie Nunez, and my dad, Edward Nunez. My little sister, Lily, and my grandma, and my aunt, she, they all came out. Uh, they all helped me grow up to, to be who I am. Uh, shout out Coach Steinberg, uh, my high school coach, and then my receiver coach, Coach Mel Smith. It's actually his birthday today, so I want to wish him a happy birthday. Um, yeah, and everyone. Your roommates, your room dogs, and what's Grandma and Aunt's name? Uh, my Grandma Debbie, uh, that's my mom's mom, and then my mom's aunt, uh, Aunt Barb. Uh, they both came out to this, to this game. Uh, my roommates, Anton Kraut, who is on the team, and then my other roommate, his name is Joseph, uh, Joseph Cuellar. We both went to high school together and played football since we were seven, eight years old together. Oh, that's um, awesome. So you guys have been playing football together for yeah. how long now? Uh, uh, 14, I don't know the math. What is what, it? What's, what, what's <laughs> awesome is is he's roommates with his two best friends, and they're still best friends. Uh, one of the number one, adu- <laughs> the number one adult rule is never live, never live with your friends or family and never go into business with your friends or family. I heard because, the business one. Yeah, because you won't stay friends very long. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard the business one as well. Yeah. That's that's. Those are, those be some wise words from from coach. Yeah, I've I've heard that that's actually happened in my family, but uh, they were able to get through it. And then that's good. It yeah. can be a cha- it can be a challenging thing. Yeah. It can be it can be a challenging <laughs> yeah. thing for sure. Well, awesome. We're glad to have you here. I I do want to wrap up with a couple shout outs if uh, that's okay. I want to shout out our production crew on the broadcast on on ESPN Plus. Uh, we pulled something off that we haven't done before. We had a sideline reporter for the first time on Saturday night. Kendall McGuire did a fantastic job. Coach, did you know that was her first time ever on the air? First time ever on the, the first time I was ever on the she air. She did a good job. Kept, hey, kept it simple. One question. Yes. Yeah. Good enough. Did Shout a, out to Kendall. Did a fantastic job, but the logistics that go into making that happen are a lot more complicated than people probably realize. It's just a couple of brief moments, but I thought it looked great, sounded great. Uh, and we love having that as a part of the broadcast. Gabe Nunez, Delane Fitzgerald, that'll do it for us today here on the Thunderbird Coaches Show. Guys, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Go Thunderbirds. I'm Spencer McLaughlin. John Smith will be back next week. We'll see you next time. And until then, go T-Birds.